everybody, I am Jason Abelson, and yeah, it's that time of week. I've got the blue on. It is Friday. It is time for our bold predictions. Let's take a look at three big fights coming down the pike this weekend. I got to get two of them right, or else I pay some dire consequences come Monday. Consequences that'll make you laugh and it'll make. We're going to start in the Toronto area. Locally, that's where we are. There's a big fight coming up Saturday night. Samuel Vargas taking on Ali Fanica. Fanica, of course, has been around the world stage for a long time. He's fought and he's beaten some great guys, but he's 39. He's long in the tooth. In Vargas, you've a guy who's fought and been dominated by some great guys. He's no spring chicken either, but is considerably younger. So who do you go with? The guy who's younger, perhaps a little fresher, but not nearly as gifted and as well-schooled as the older guy who, quite frankly, doesn't have too many fights left in his career. I think you go with Ali Finica. I think the older guy, the knowledge, the know-how, how to win in big fights away from home, I think will carry Finica to a decision win over Sammy Vargas. Next, we go to Lincoln, Nebraska. It is the co-main event to the big fight Saturday night, which we will get to momentarily. But we've got Oleksandr Gvozdik from the Ukraine, a light heavyweight, taking on Craig Baker, light heavyweight from Texas. This, my friends, is a squash match. Craig Baker will be a stain on the canvas by the fourth round. Vrovzdik, easy, brutally, in four. And the final fight from Lincoln, Nebraska. Oh, we've been looking forward to this one for a long time. Four major belts on the line the first time that's happened in over a decade. Unified champion Terrence Crawford against unified champion Julius Ndongo for the super lightweight undisputed title and boy oh boy there are so many ways to look at this fight and you can look at Terrence Crawford and you have to say that this guy is one of the best boxers to come around in the last 10-15 years he is that good he's kind of a mixture of Floyd Mayweather and Sugar Ray Leonard a guy that just is so good technically who knows his way around every inch of that ring and once he gets to the point where he's dominating a guy he sniffs blood like Sugar Ray Leonard used to, and he absolutely goes for broke. You can't help but love and admire the way he fights because he is excellence personified. Against Julius Indongo, a guy who basically last November nobody heard of. Even his mom was vaguely familiar with him, but that's about it. He goes into December. He knocks out Edward Troyanovsky. A few months later, he goes to Scotland, dominates Ricky Burns. All of a sudden, this no-name has got two world titles around his waist, and he had to travel to the champion's hometown to claim each title. Well, he's trying to make him the trifecta, to go into Crawford's hometown and get the other two belts in the division. What a story, and what a fighter. There is more to this guy than meets the eye. He is tall, he is rangy, he's a southpaw, he fights some crazy angles. He's got unorthodox power. He is a real, real puzzle in the ring. And you know what? What's this segment called? It's called bold predictions. It's not called obvious predictions or tepid predictions or I'll play it safe predictions. It's called bold predictions. And with that in mind, I am calling Julius Ndongo and his range and his awkwardness and his unique qualities Qualities you can't train for. There's no way you can train to face Julius Ndongo. There's no way that Ndongo can train to face Crawford. But I have a feeling. The momentum. There are intangibles in this too. Because maybe you're saying, oh, Jason, you're just painting a rosy picture. Yeah, there's that and there's so much more. But let's those intangibles and the story and the momentum and the fact that this guy is quality and awkward, I think are going to be huge, huge boxes that will be ticked in his favor. And I like Ndongo via decision Saturday night over Terrence Crawford in a terrific fight and one that will basically put a bow on what's been one of the best stories we've seen in boxing in some time, and that is Julius Ndongo going to the third country, the third city, in less than six months and capturing his fourth world title. You can't do better than that. So let me know, what do you think about my picks? Was I way below the belt or right on the line, on crack or on point? Let me know. Leave your comments in the comments section. If you like what I had to say, spread it around. Share it with the world. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the best place 
for boxing news, content, predictions, and opinions anywhere on the web, right here, BoxCaster. Keep them up.